So welcome everybody. Uh, very good to see you for this, this webinar. The title is, I think, a very useful one, Ministers as School Chaplains, an opportunity not to be missed. So we're delighted that you could be with us. And we're, we've got Shuna Dix from Cults um, in Aberdeenshire and Jonathan from the Lyle in Greenock, who will be leading our discussion. They'll be sharing from their experience, but also inviting you to share from yours as well. My name's Isabel and I'm the uh, Church of Scotland Children and Family uh, Development Worker, but I'm also Secretary to the Education and Schools Group, which is within the Faith Action Forum. And uh, within that Education and Schools Group, we're doing a lot to try and support and encourage school chaplaincy, schools ministry, and the Church of Scotland local authority reps. So um, we've got Marie here from Orkney, who's also on the um, Education Schools Group, and Stephen in Ochterada, who's another member of that group as well. So you, you might find them in your discussion groups. But we're finding that I'm really positive about this evening because I think parish ministry is such a broad and wide thing. It's much more than just doing your the Sunday service. And a key part of parish ministry for many people is getting involved in your local school in some way. But I think it's quite a lack that we're not very good at training and equipping ministers into uh, if being effective as a school chaplain or connecting into schools. And sometimes we're not very good at maybe sharing our experience and our learning to help each other in how we can do that. So I hope that this, um, this evening's webinar and some other training that we're planning to have will really help people, particularly those in ordained ministry, to be able to be effective um, and positive as they reach out and connect into schools ministry. So just as we start, I'd like to just read a, lead us in a short word of prayer. So as we think about our ministry into our local communities and into our schools, may we by word and example support and encourage and share something of your love wherever you may call us. Bless us with faith to be and share the good news of God's love. Bless us with love to be compassionate in heart to all those we encounter. Bless us with hope and the courage to respond to an ever-changing world. Bless us with peace, a gift to share with many who need it. Amen. So let me now hand over to Shuna and Jonathan, who I think are going to do a double act. Thank you, Isabel. I'm going to apologise in advance about my voice this evening. I've got a bit of a stinker of a cold. Um, so I was quite pleased that Jonathan that she was here at the beginning because he was originally going to join us in um further on into the session. I think what we want to start off with tonight is just to say that we're not here as experts. We're here as people who are enthusiastic in our work with schools, but we don't have the answers to everything. And I hope that through the evening we'll get an opportunity when we have some breakout time for you all to share your your own experiences um, and learn from each other. And yeah, so I think that that's kind of our upfront thing to say is that we're not here as experts, we're just enthusiastic practitioners, and um, there's still probably lots to learn about the whole uh, idea of school chaplaincy. So I'm going to begin a conversation with Jonathan just by throwing him a quick question. So Jonathan, what is school okay. chaplaincy? What does it mean? What are we talking about when we talk about school chaplaincy? Well, school chaplaincy is a very varied subject, and it all depends on uh, a number of factors which we'll obviously explore as we go through tonight's proceedings. Uh, for a lot of people, it um, school chaplaincy may involve doing assemblies. That's a large part of what we do, but there's so much more to it, um, or there's the opportunity for it to be so much more than just leading assemblies. 
assemblies and collective worship in in a school environment. It's an opportunity to be um, to be a friend to the school, to be a bridge between the school and the church. It's an opportunity to be the provider of not just um, services, but also pastoral support to both pupils and indeed the staff. It's all about, primarily it's all about relationships and taking an opportunity to um, to see how far that relationship can expand. Can it go beyond just our work with pupils? Can it be to the staff, to carers, to parents and to the wider community and to allow that bridge to be built um, even stronger between the church and our school families? Um, but as we say, relationships are key and it's really, in many respects, without trying to sound too wishy-washy, it's what we make of it. That what, um, that's what essentially becomes what school chaplaincy can be all about. Yeah, I think that's a really good point about the relationships. And just later on, I share a story and it's about how you build up a good relationship with a school um, and how long that can actually take. Um, but we'll take it. So, Jonathan, if I were to turn the question on its head a wee bit and say, what well, this school chapter will say not? Well, first and foremost, um, I, I think the, the, the one key thing is it's not a, it's not a platform for proselytising. It's, it's, not a, a, it's not a situation where we are imposing our views, our, imposing our faith on a school community, because as we have, as we have to appreciate, um, we have a very, we have a very multi, uh, multi faith, multicultural um, society, and we're obviously in our schools while we're there to um, speak freely about what, about our faith and and who we are and what we believe in. We have to be very sensitive to the other uh, faiths and other situations that we that we may face in a school environment. So, um, it's I think that's first and foremost. Um, it's also not. Um, a situation where we are necessary when we are in there in a school environment, we are there at the pleasure of the head teacher and the school staff, and we have to remember that it is a privilege for us to be there. So it's not a given, uh, and so we must never, um, we must never uh, forget that. And we've got to be very, we've got, you know, it's in that spirit of gratitude that we uh, we, we come into a school environment. So um, it's not something which we should be. Um, I'm, trying, I'm using the word very carefully. It's not a privilege we should be abusing. Uh, no. I think that's uh, I think that's first and foremost, and, and that's a word of caution which I would offer anyone who is maybe not in a school chaplaincy environment at the moment. But also, Shana, one of the things is obviously we have we have churches full of people. Well, we hope we have churches full of people, but we have people who want to be involved in schools. Perhaps they come from a, a school background um, themselves. Maybe they come from an education background themselves and they're keen to be involved. Why should ministers be involved in school chaplaincy? Why ministers? Um, I think part, partly because I see myself as the parish minister, um, that I have a care for the whole parish, not just those that pitch up on a Sunday morning, and those that sadly we have to provide services for at the end of their lives. Um, that it's, um, I see myself, like you, you talked about the bridge between the church and, and the school community. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the things, especially nowadays when there are so few children in the church, to be invited into a school is a real gift. And you're quite right when you say we're not there out of any right to be there. We're there at the invitation of the head teacher. Um, and I, I suppose see myself in the parish ministry as representing the church across the community and the school is part of that community. And so I think it's important that all parts of the community know who you are. Yeah. Um, and so being in the school, and being very visible amongst the children, it means that they might go home and talk to their parents. Oh, we had Reverend Shuna in today and she was telling us this. And so, or you might be out walking around the the parish and a kid from the school sees you and waves at you and the parent goes, who's that you're talking to? And they'll go, that's just Reverend Shuna from the church and she, you know, blah, blah, all these things. And I've written down in my wee notes here that I, our daily walk with the dogs at lunchtime take us, takes us round past the school and I love nothing better than I'm walking past the school and seeing a whole bunch of kids running down to the, the fence to go, hello Shuna, hello. Yeah. Um, and, and it just gladdens my heart that actually they recognise me for who I am and the role that I hold. And I suppose when I'm there, I'm, I'm constantly reminding them, you know, I am Shuna, I'm the minister. It's a church and it's that building down the road, you know, the one with the tall tower and the, whatever. 
Yeah, absolutely. And there, there is nothing that I, I, I personally, I, I, I totally agree with that. I also love it when when you're in the supermarket or you're in the shopping mall and you hear, and you hear them going, hey, Jonathan! and it's lovely. It's that when they feel comfortable enough to to, to say hello to you. Um, and, you know, it's that thing when you in some respects in your head, you go, you know, you've sort of you've made an impact when they feel comfortable enough to speak to you. I was on I was actually the train last Tuesday night. You take me back to my 80s. I went to see Rick Astley and Belinda Carlisle in the high. And I was sitting in the train on the way into Glasgow Central and one of my primary seven pupils from the school that I'm chaplain in actually came in and I was just sitting there minding my own business and he must have seen me getting on the train and he walked past and he actually turned to me while waiting to get off the train. He was like, hi, Jonathan. And I was like, oh, and, then, and he was going you know, into Glasgow in his own and we had a nice conversation there. And it's, and it's I think you, you sum it up perfectly. It gladdens your heart, doesn't it? Um, yeah. When you get that relationship formed. But I suppose, Shana, I think what would be really good, it, it'd be good for us to hear from those who are in the webinar with us, if they could maybe give us some sort of indication of if how many of the folk who are with us just now are active in schools just now, um, they can do that either by a show of hands or what even better, it'd be great if you could maybe inject something into the chat just to let us know uh, the context that you're currently serving in or uh, perhaps that you're hoping to serve in in the times ahead if perhaps you're new to your charge. Um, it'd be really good to hear a little bit about um, uh, to, to use that uh, guilt terminology, who you are and whom you serve. <laughs> yeah. um, so please feel free to do that just now. Uh, so Sheena, you're in, I think you, you're in Cults Primary, is that right? Yes. Uh, and is there any other context that you're in as well as, as yeah, Cults Primary? I have, yeah, I have three, three, four schools now within my parish. Um, I have um, Cults Primary, I have Mill Timber Primary School and a brand new school in a bit of housing development that has recently come within the parish bounds. Um, and we also have Cults Academy, which is um, one of the largest secondary schools in um, in the city of Aberdeen. So, and all very, very different, very, very different. But what I want to, to do now is just to sort of share a little bit of a story around one of those schools which um, I have to confess, when I came here six years ago, I'd come from a parish where there were two primary schools and a secondary school. In fact, the, sec the secondary school, I had to drive through the grounds of the school to get to the manse. You know, I could, throw a, I could throw a stone from my garden and break a window if I'd wanted to. Um, and But the two primary schools there, I was in one of them each week. So in the schools, quite a lot well known to the staff, well known to the pupils. And I arrived at Cults and um, in my first week contacted the school and said, hi, I'm Shuna, the new minister down at the church. I'd love to come and meet you and to talk to you about how we can get involved and why I can get involved in school, blah, blah, blah. Head teacher very politely replied and said, yes, love to meet you. Please come up. We arranged a time for me to go up. And I went in and she sat there with her deputy head and herself with a lovely chat but she made it very, very clear that I shouldn't expect to be in the school, that they didn't have very much um, input from the local churches. This had been a historic thing. and um, They were playing, being very careful. With, they'd been at one time some parents had been quite vocal about the amount of input churches were having, and so she had shied away from that. So I left that meeting really quite disappointed. I thought, oh, especially as the school's within walking distance of the man. So I was kind of like, oh, right, okay. Um, oh, right. But six years on, things are completely different. Completely different. And so I want to, to pose myself the question, what happened? What was the change? And two things changed. A new head teacher and COVID. Those two things open doors in a way that um, I might not have expected. With regards to the, the head teacher, it was actually the deputy head that stepped up to take the head teacher's job, but I discovered quite quickly she had a much more open approach, although that just happened around the time that, that COVID happened too. Um, the local clergy, um, the parish has got two independent fellowships and the Scottish Episcopal Church and ourselves within its bounds. So the Episcopal Church, one of the independent fellowships and myself, we had a conversation around how we could best 
help and support the school during the, and especially initially when the children were not in school, pardon me. And um, we recognised that teachers were under a lot of pressure to try and produce material that could go up in Google Classrooms. And maybe here was a way that we could get in because we'd all recognised none of us were getting into the school in a meaningful way. And so we offered the school pre-recorded school assemblies. There were three of us. One would do infants, one would do middle, and one would do the senior. And we'd provide these videos that could be used at any point of any week by any of the staff that felt that they wanted to use them. School said that would be fantastic. They said that would be a really big help. So we did those one a term to start with, and it changed from us at the beginning of the term emailing the school and saying, would you like an assembly or assemblies again, to them actually getting in touch with us to say, could you provide us with some assemblies again? We really appreciate them. The other thing that we did during um, the first year of the pandemic was recognising how difficult school had been for not just the teachers' staff, but for the support staff, the people running, helping to run the schools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so we got together and made up a little care package for every single member of staff in that school. Everybody got, whether it was the janitor, the cleaner, the kitchen folk, the office staff, the, the classroom assistants, the teachers, everybody got a little care package with a handwritten card saying we really appreciate what you've been doing for the children in our community during this time. And I think the combination of those two things just kind of broke down a few barriers. And so last year, um, I got uh, an invitation from the school to do assembly again. And this time it was you can either pre-record, but if you'd like to come into school, we'd be really pleased to see you. So I just jumped at the chance. And no longer was it me just doing one little year group. I was in doing assemblies across the school. So I've done with the infants, with the middle stages, with the upper stages. Um, and that's been really fantastic. Um, in there regularly, every term now, um, it's just, yeah, and it's just a completely different relationship. There's always been things that the school did engage with the church for, though I have to say it's not that there was no engagement at all. The nursery classes at the primary school have, I'd always had a good relationship, from the word go, a good relationship with them. They would come down to the church at Christmas time and at Easter time where they would put on a little show. I would tell a wee story. They'd come and see our Christmas lights for the Christmas tree festival um, and Santa would arrive and dish out these parcels. And the church is always full of parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles who come to share in that. And then again at Easter, a similar kind of idea, children come down, hear a wee bit about the Easter story. So that, that, that had been good throughout the other thing that the school have always in my time taken part in is our Christmas tree festival. It happens two weeks before Christmas every year. We've got about 14, 15 Christmas trees and we invite um, local children and young people's groups to decorate those trees. We give a theme. So that's the theme for this year. We'd like you to decorate a tree on that. This last year we did Christmas movies. Um, so, so the school's always kind of taken part in that. But over the last week, while, well, yes, absolutely, complete breaking down of barriers. I have a really good relationship with a couple of senior staff in the school. Um, and I have to say, one of the ways I also did that is social media. This is a, a little, just a little tip. Most primary schools and secondary schools will have a Twitter account where they share good news stories about what's going on in the school, etc., etc. I started to engage with those in a positive way, not in a creepy kind of stalking kind of way, but just in a really kind of, oh, that's lo lovely, that's great. And occasionally when I'm in school, they might take a photograph of me at assembly and that goes on their Twitter feed. So the, you know, the wider community starts to see that things are happening. Um, and it's find that a little gentle way of kind of encouraging the school. So at the end of every term, I'll put a little post up on my Twitter saying, wishing all the staff and pupils at and a rattle of all the schools a blessed holiday, come back refreshed, you know, and enjoy your time off kind of thing. Just little things like that. So to the point is that one of the teachers at Colts Primary and I have a, a daily interaction about how we're getting on with Wordle and connections. <laughs> it sounds really silly, but it's just a little way, you know, we've built up a really good, lovely, lovely relationship. But this 
has taken a lot of patience to get to where we are now. And I think that's the thing, I, the encouragement I want, you, want to give is that it's not necessarily going to be an instantaneous relationship that you have. Some schools will be very open, say, come away in. You know, other schools may be a bit reticent. Um, and so you need to take time and build that relationship. So I suppose the approach that I've taken here is to be very patient, to be open, to be approachable, to be helpful, to show that we care, to engage with the school, offer to help if you see a need at the school. Um, don't be demanding. Remember, this is a privilege, not a given. It's not a right. Um, and if you are invited to take assemblies in the school, do a bit of research with the school about what they might be looking for. For example, what are the school's values? Schools all have a value statement. What are their values? Um, get to know what GERFEC is all about, getting it right for every child. What does that actually mean? What's the curriculum for excellence all about? Um, is the school a rights respecting school? Is it an eco school? All of these things will give you a picture of who your school community is and how best you can come into school, either through assembly or through other activities, and support what they're doing and not be cutting across something. There's no point in you going into school if they're focusing on a particular part of the rights respecting you know, children's rights, if you then come in and talk about something that's completely unrelated. Very helpful to them if you could come in and talk because actually it helps tick a box if you're, you know, from a very practical thing for them, it ticks a box for you. It gives you a starting point as to where, where you can start. Um, and it also shows if you ask these questions, you're actually really interested in the school rather than coming in with all your favourite Bible stories all the time. Yes, we want to share Bible stories and you absolutely can share Bible stories. Um, but, you know, work with the school. And on that point, I wanted to pick up something um, Jonathan said earlier on about when you're in the school, you know, you're there as a representative of the church. You're speaking to a group of people who are multi-faith, potentially, um, not engaged in church. So use of language, I think, is really, really important. And so I will always say things like, I believe, or at church we do this, or as a Christian, I this is how I would approach this situation. And alongside that, um, when you're thinking about if you want to use songs in school, be careful about the songs that you use. I would never use what I would call confessional songs, so you're not putting words in children's mouths. Um, I, I always laughed at my, my daughter. Um, used to come to all the holiday clubs at my home church, and she'll still sing to this day, I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-I-R-S-E-A-N. But she's not. <laughs> But you're putting words in children's mouths, so be very, very careful about that. And then towards the end of our time together, we're going to, I'm going to share, and Jonathan will share too, some places to go and find um, material and songs and things that might be helpful within that context. Um, there's also times a year when it's difficult to avoid faith-based songs, um, Christmas and Easter being one. But what I found really helpful was last Easter, being the first time I was actually in the school doing an Easter assembly at this particular school, was to send the, the, the teacher who was going to be with me at that assembly a note of the songs with the words is to say to her, it's okay, are you comfortable if we sing these? And she came back and she says, no, that's absolutely fine. So never be afraid to ask is what I mean. You know, um, just always check. It's always, always check. So anyway, that's a bit of a long and rambling story. Jonathan, have you got a wee story you'd like to share maybe about something that you've done in a school or something? Sure. Not quite Ab absolutely. Um it's wonderful to hear the wonderful to hear the the fruits of your your perseverance, Shuna, in the in the relationships you've built up, which has been lovely to hear. And uh, and long may that continue. And yes, um the the Twitter uh, or X as they call it now, um it's it's really interesting to see um how many schools use it and how it is a wonderful opportunity just to just to, to offer that gentle word of encouragement, even if it's just liking um, the things that are going on. And it's amazing how often your face can pop up when you least expect it. Um, one of the, the, the interesting things that um, I have here is um, I, I, work in, I work in a team as well. And what's been wonderful is I, I've, I've been in Lylekirk now, been a minister for nearly 12 years, um, but I've been, um, I've been here in Lylekirk since the May of 2021. So I moved during lockdown uh, to this charge and I had the privilege of being invited in um, 
because we have we already had a very well established school chaplain in the form of my my friend and colleague, the Reverend Karen Harbison in Westburn Parish Church in Greenock. Um, she already had for many years formed a wonderful relationship with Argowan Primary in Greenock, and I was very fortunate to be invited in. Um, my first exercise was to invite my, was was to um, introduce myself um, not only as a school chaplain but also as uh, a parent of an incoming primary five pupil, um, as one of the the parents of a new of a new child. So it was a great opportunity to introduce myself as Jonathan, but also to introduce myself as a minister in the town and as uh, as, and uh, and to be welcomed as a chaplain, but what um, was very interesting is I'm, I work alongside my friend the Reverend Karen in um, in Westburn Parish Church, but we we are also part of a wider chaplaincy team that work with um, the local feeder high school that is Calderside uh, not Calderside Academy, but that's where Karen and I work in probation together. Um, uh, Clydeview Academy, I should know that because my other daughter goes there. Clydeview Academy in Greenock uh, and, and and it serves Greenock and Gurick. And we are part of the call of the the Clydeview Chaplaincy team. And when we are there, we um, have a wonderful opportunity not only to serve our individual year groups, uh, but also to collectively serve first year. We um, also do a program with all of the local feeder primary schools into the high school and what we do is we actually do a program there with the primary sevens of Argowan Primary, Lady Alice Primary, um, Ailey Mill Primary, New York, um, uh, Port, uh, no, that's uh, Easter Code, um, Moorfoot Primary, Gurick Primary, five different primary schools where we work with the primary sevens and what we do there is we introduce the values of the high school to the primary sevens. And we do that um, not only by doing various uh, activities and, and, and reflections, we also um, have a Bible story as part of that um, and how we uh, we share the, 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 the different uh, school values in a faith context. And that's been very well received uh, and to, the opportunity to work with, you know, with several hundred primary sevens over the course of a week has been um, absolutely, uh, absolutely fantastic. And it's through the trust and the relationships built by our individual chaplains um, who are working in these different primary schools. Um, we are all welcomed into the different primary schools to do this. And we then journey with them all the way through high school as well. So it's been a wonderful opportunity uh, to see that grow and develop. The reason why I keep on, um, I kept on saying Calderside instead of Clyde View was, um, I'm very fortunate to work with uh, Karen and David, um, Karen Harbison and David Burt, who are both part of what used to be the Calderside Chaplaincy team who wrote the bubblegum and fluff and Easter code material that some of you may have used in years gone by. This is a programme which introduces the Christmas story for bubblegum and fluff and the Easter code for surprise, surprise, Easter. And they uh, we use them with primary five and primary six again as a team where we work with those primary schools again as a collective. So we've been able to build up relationships with pupils from primary five right through to a six um, and it's a um, very it's a wonderful opportunity for that to happen um, but again it's all about trust the relationships that have been built and when at the as we journey through it it's great that as these pupils get older they're still not embarrassed to say hello to you when you bump I don't know Jonathan the golden days I always laugh um, when I was at Aberlair because the, the summer, I'd be at the primary school doing their, in their farewell assembly with the older yeah. ones to secondary school. And then they get into first year and they're still quite happy. Oh, to, yeah. No, they're happy in first year. Second year, they're starting to ignore you. Third year, you're not you're getting any eye contact. None yeah. whatsoever. Fourth year, they start to kind of mellow a little bit. By the time they get to fifth or sixth year, they're quite happy to talk to you again. <laughs> uh, there's, a wee, there's a wee cycle, a cycle of coolness <laughs> along the way. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose the thing, I think the thing is, I my my oldest daughter is now in fourth year. So when I started in um when I started in Clydeview Academy, um, my daughter was going into second year. So I suppose one of the fortunate things was I made a vow that I would never be my daughter's school chaplain in secondary school. And as a result of that, 
her pals are always happy to say hello to me as well. So that's <laughs> that's been a bit of an icebreaker along the way. But as I say, every circumstance is different. But as I say, that's been one of our success things. With through the trust and relationships built, we've been able to um, we've been able to to journey with these pupils for a very long time. Yeah, and that sounds that, fantastic um, and really. Yeah you know, worth the hard work that that's, that'll have taken to get you there. Certainly, and, uh, that's fantastic. Anyway, we've talked for quite a while now, John, I think. I think it's time we give everybody else a wee opportunity to, to have a chat. What we would like to do is, um, and I'm hoping this ball's going to facilitate this, is put folks into some breakout rooms and for you to, once you're in your breakout room, do the usual, introduce yourself to each other, say a little bit about the context, maybe a wee bit about how many schools are in your parish, whether or not you're involved in any of them, that kind of thing. What kind of parish is it? Because I think you, know, you may find is that there's some trends that filter through, you know, differences in rural primary schools to much bigger town or urban or mixed schools. And then what I'd like you to do, if you can, if you've got a story, tell a good news story about how you've been involved in a school. We're not wanting bad news just now. We're going to come back to that. But a good news story. Share some of your experience. It may well be it's not you doing this, whatever it was. It may be something that's happened within your church community. But just take some time to sort of share a good news story. And we're going to give you maybe 15 minutes or so to do this. Yep. Uh, is that okay? And then we'll come back. Not looking for any feedback at this point, Um what I would suggest is we've kind of left some time at the end for questions. So if you do have any questions as we're going through any of this, jot them down and then we'll have a bit of a Q&A towards the end. But for now, just go to your breakout rooms, introduce yourselves and share some good news. As a chat as a chatterbox to trade, I was I thought I'd jump at the opportunity of having a blather with everyone, so it was good. No, I, no, I, I thought no, I, I they probably heard enough from me and leave them to chat, and so I hope they're not weren't offended that I opted to just come out and switch my camera off for a wee bit and rest my voice. Well, <laughs> as you say, I heard when we were talking this morning, getting things organised, I could hear that you were and um, that you were um, it was you, you need you certainly needed to have an opportunity to rest, so um, <laughs> grab them when you can, grab them. Oh, it, it, was, it was interesting. Without putting anyone on the spot in our group, there was just there was a lovely line um, that that came up in our group, which, which reminded us that each school that we are working with has its own personality. And I thought that was a lovely way of summing things up. Um, and it was, and I thought it was, it was, I thought, I thought, couldn't put it better myself. It was a, a lovely white line um, that we were that just reminded us of uh, the, the unique privilege we have when we're invited into a school context. So. Where were we? We've come back together and we, we, we've talked about the good pieces of chaplaincy. We've talked about the things that are going well, but there are also times where it doesn't go quite so well. And these and, and it happens. Shuna, have you got any stories that you would like yeah, that, you I mean, that you could share? Have you got any, any classics? Yeah, no, this, this is kind of like a story in reverse to the first one. Um, in complete contrast to the Cults Primary School, when I arrived here, I got in touch with Miltimber Primary School just along the road in the parish to say, hi, new minister, I would love to come and meet you. And and that was great. I mean, I ended up, I was going to school at least once a month. Their assembly time was straight after lunch. Top tip. If assembly is after lunch or if it's after morning break, go in early. Go to the staff room and sit and listen to the chatter. Even if you're just sitting listening to the chatter, it doesn't matter. I used to do this at, in my first parish, the two there. I ended up getting invited on the staff night out, you know, just because I got to know the staff and it was great fun. And I went, I made sure I went, you know, with a great, great time. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Multimber Primary, assembly, just after lunchtime, almost got into staff room, great leathers, great laugh, got to know the staff, that was fine. The te teacher retired, head teacher retired, new head teacher. She's absolutely lovely, don't get me wrong, not an issue with her at all, but it's a very different approach. And so instead of being in there once a month, I'm probably now there once a term. Um, and yeah, so not got the same opportunities to get to know the staff and the, the pupils. Certainly the hangover from the previous teacher 
head teacher means I do know quite a few of the staff, but there's quite a few new faces that I don't know at all. Assembly is first thing in the morning. So the bell goes, the kids have gone to class and they're then wheeled into school. There's no time, no opportunity to get to know the, the staff there. Um, and I find that really frustrating, really frustrating. So it's like the opposite, if you like, to the first story of how it's taken time to get there and now we're already in a good place. This is like a feeling a little bit kind of, we get wheeled in to do the odd assembly and that's about it. That's about it. And even when we do do assembly, it's more that we've got like a 10, 15 minute slot rather than having the whole assembly because they do all their awards and all their things and all the rest of it. Although the one good thing is that this school has a subscription to Fishy Music, which makes life really great fun when you are putting assemblies together because you know you've got all of the Fishy songs out there, which we'll talk a wee bit more about later on. So yes, yeah, so I suppose that's the, the, the kind of the the flip side, I suppose. And, and that's back to what I was saying, that, you know, very early on, you made the point as well about it's been the invitation of the head teacher and that's the the gatekeeper. The head teacher is the gatekeeper. And and so if they've got a different approach, you may not be as um, in the school as often as you might otherwise have hoped for. So, Jonathan, have you got any, any stories of a similar ilk or when things maybe haven't gone quite the way you planned them? Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, I'm on my third charge. Um, I've been in, I've, I've been in uh, three different situ three different churches or three different congregation uh, contexts in my ministry so far. And in my first charge, I, I was I was very fortunate to be the um, the chaplain to three primary schools and um, part of the chaplaincy team for the secondary school. And one of the, interestingly enough, one of the, the secondary school, one of the primary schools which I had um, a wonderful relationship in, again, I'd built up a very, very good relationship with the staff and the and the pupils, um, using primarily using the rights respecting schools um, platform. That was a, a, a really big part of it. But the head teacher retired and the, the deputy head had already moved to another school. Um, and so there was a new... Uh, management coming in. Now, interestingly enough, one of the schools that I um, had waited quite a long time to be invited into um, as, uh, as, a, as a school chaplain, um, it, 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 the interesting thing was that head teacher who I was still waiting to invite me in beyond just sort of sitting in, you know, sitting through the nativity or the Easter service and seeing a wee bit and, and so on and so forth, um, then became the head teacher of the school that I'd been in a really good relationship in. And so I think more out of staff pressure than anything else, I was invited in to continue doing what I was already doing. It wasn't because the head teacher necessarily wanted me there, but it was the staff had known that I'd built up such a good relationship and the school and the church had such a good relationship. The church, the school always came to the church um, because we were able to accommodate parents and pupils at the same time, et cetera, et cetera. And that relationship had been really strong. Yeah. But I remember I went in, now different head teachers are different ways of running schools and discipline and and control of schools can be very different. I remember going into um, an assembly and in this one assembly, this was about maybe two or three weeks after the new head teacher, the primary sevens were, I don't know if it was a full moon, I don't know what it was, the primary sevens were wild, absolutely wild. Now, in the five years that I had been in that school, that had never happened before. And the, the primary sevens were just, um, they, were, they were just not settling at all. And the situation used to be the staff, the, the, the staff used to just sort of leave me to it when I was with the school because they used to, with the, the, the people, they were, they were very comfortable with me, and never they were gay. And the head teacher had obviously could hear what the, the, the level of noise that was going on in the room. Not through me getting them riled up, absolutely not. They were just they were not settling. And the head teacher basically came in and put a stop to the assembly time, sent the primary sevens back to their class, and I, and, and then I was told to continue the assembly. And I just knew in that moment, I thought to myself. 
this is going to put a real dent in my relationship with the primary sevens because this experience is going to be associated with me. And just to confirm that, <laughs> I was then made to follow the head teacher around each of the primary seven classes while they were made to apologize to me. And I felt so uncomfortable in that moment um, because I, this was not what I wanted. I was like, look, this just, you know, these things happen. We've got, we have off days. We, we've all been there. We might have even been part of it when we were at primary school. Um, I, I just knew that this was going to put a real sort of dent in my relationship with the primary sevens. And it took a long time to rebuild that, I felt. Um, but thankfully, I was then in with them in the high school and we'd moved forward together after that. But I remember that one. That was probably my one, the most negative experience I've had in school chaplaincy. And it still sticks with me. And I still remember how I felt, let alone how the primary sevens felt, all going, sorry, Jonathan. Um, and, um, and being made to feel that they were back in primary one again. So that's my story. That's great. Thanks, Jonathan. So now we're going to pop you back into your um, breakout rooms. And this time, it's yet yeah, we want you to share your bad news stories, the things that haven't gone well. But hopefully in a way that, you, you, you know, in sharing them, you're kind of learning from each other about what some of the pitfalls could be. Or, you know, if you if you feel that like you made a mistake, what that was and why you wouldn't do that again. So that's the kind of thing. Um, and I'm just looking at watch, maybe just 10 minutes this time. We've been up quite so long this time. But if it's a bowl, if you could facilitate everybody going back okay. into the okay. And again, no offence to anybody, but I'm going to use the time just to um, not talk. I hope everybody found that um, time helpful. Uh, it's not often, I think, that we get opportunity to kind of share when things have gone wrong and, and ho hopefully use them as a, a learning point or to share that experience. Um, and, and hopefully the two the two conversations side by side show you how things can go really well, but also um, give you some hints and tips as to how to avoid some of the other situations or at least how to handle some of the other situations. We've got... Okay, it was, sure, I was just saying that was one of the things that was really good in our conversation. It was, it was, we, we shared a couple of examples, but it was about how in the end, there was, here's some tips on how we could maybe not let for that not to happen again, which were really helpful. And um, so it was really good to share that. So thanks for that. Sorry, Shana, you were saying. No, no, that's okay. We've got about um, just under 20 minutes of our time left. Um, so I thought maybe what we could do, Jonathan, if we, if we were to share some of the places and resources that we use, and then we can open up to sort of Q&A, if you like, um, and then sort of round our time off together. Or if anybody's got anything that they didn't get to say, but they wanted to say, then we can offer that opportunity as well. So I've... I've Got a little list here of different places that I go to when I'm thinking about school assemblies, particularly, um, but not just about school assemblies, but you know, if the schools are working on a project, ways that you can actually get involved. Um, my number one place to go looking for a school assembly is this wonderful website called assemblies.org.uk. They have all age assemblies, so whole school assemblies, they have, it's based on the English kind of model, so you've got key stages, so key stage one all the way through. Um, so there are secondary assemblies there, prim all whole school primary assemblies, but if you're working with infants, key stage one and two, if you're working with slightly older kids, you can work your way up through the stages. A number of the assemblies that are on there have been written from a faith-based perspective, because obviously in the England school system, you have Church of England schools as well as Roman Catholic schools. So there are a number in there that will tackle some of the faith-based things. A wonderful, wonderful resource. Alongside that, and I mentioned Fishy Music earlier on, Fishy Music um, have a huge back catalogue of songs, some faith-based, but a lot of them aimed at schools to be used um, in schools, but absolutely fit in with different um Bible stories or whatever. The way fishy music work now has changed slightly. I do still have some of their CDs, so um, I'm that old. Um, but to access a lot of their newer material, you do need a subscription. So if your school's got a subscription, like my lovely Multiver Primary School has, absolutely brilliant. 
I can just let the head teacher know which songs I'm looking for, and she'll have them looked up and ready. And um, if you know, I've I invested in a, a church subscription as well because we do use some fishy songs in church as well. So we do have a subscription. They come at different levels and give you different varying levels of access. But fishy music, not only do you have songs there, but they also have um, some suggestions for how those songs can be used. You know, so it's a teaching idea, so things that you can maybe hook on to for, for assemblies or if you're in a classroom um, for things there. Um, other websites, twinkle. So it's twinkl.co.uk. Another fabulous resource, um, not just for, for schools work, but for, for church as well. Great, great things there that you can use. Don't forget the, the UNICEF and the UNHCR websites. If, you, if your school is a rights respecting school, absolutely full of um, fabulous videos, um, things that you can use um, to give you some ideas. And then people like Christian Aid, CAFOD, Royal British Legion, Fair Trade Foundation, all of these have a scholastic part to their websites where you can get ideas for school assemblies. Some of them are really there ready just to print off and run with. Some you're clearly going to need to tweak to your um, own um, situations. Times Educational Supplement, TES, again, another resource. You need to register with them, but again, they've got material there that you could adapt. BBC, they've got school, smart, school stuffs on their website. Um, Scottish Builders Society, Scottish Builders Society, Scottish Bible Society. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, they now have the 10 Must Know Bible Stories material on their website, which was um, growing up out of a uh, church here in Aberdeen, um, specifically thinking about schools work. Um, you get yourself, know what Gerfic is, getting it right for every child. Um, know what the Curriculum for Excellence is all about. A couple of Facebook pages that will be really helpful. There's the Collective Worship Facebook page. That was kind of set up um, as an offshoot. I think it came one of the COVID-type um, websites where folk were looking for ideas for things to do with online assemblies and stuff. Great ideas in there. There's the Now You're Talking Facebook page. Always a good place to get ideas, but also to ask ideas, ask for ideas. And, and a lot of these Facebook pages are always really supportive. Somebody will say, I'm looking for an idea for something and folk will pile in with ideas. So join those as well. There's Serve Your Local School, which Isabel is the person to go to for uh, for that. Maybe Isabel, in a minute, you could say a wee bit more about yeah. um, um, Serve Your Local that. Schools is a kind of collective, really, but great website, great Facebook page. But they share stories from Scotland, share ideas, different ways that people ministers, people from congregations can get involved in schools, but they've also got a resources page where every a one-stop shop, if you like, and most of the ones that Shuna's mentioned are on there. So have a look at that, join that Facebook page. They share, you know, there's two or three posts a week of really good accessible things that can help uh, pr provide a resource or an idea for engaging in schools. So look at Serve Your Local Schools. I'll send you the link um, for that in a follow-up email and for some of these other resources. So don't worry about writing it down just now. That's fine. And of course, there's always good old YouTube. I'm not maybe teaching granny to suck eggs here, but YouTube, if you're looking for any kind of innovative ways of telling Bible stories or, or whatever, um, YouTube's a great resource. So, yeah. Can, you can go down a few rabbit holes looking for what you're looking for, but you know there's some there's some good ones there, especially if you want to be you know like lots of little Lego stories, you know, and folk have used that Lego and animation and things to tell um, Bible stories, um, and yeah, so lots of Jonathan, have I missed anything that you would want to highlight? No, I think you've pretty much covered the majority of them, Shuna. There was a couple of. A couple of sort of curveball ones I wanted to offer, just um, things that I've used in, in in recent times, which might be helpful depending on the resources that are available in your context. First off, just one thing, uh, one other website that might be worth looking at is Christian Values in Education in Scotland, cve-scotland.org.uk. They have a resources section, um, and in that you will find um, information about the two 
um, chaplaincy programs that um, I mentioned earlier, Bubblegum and Fluff and the Easter Code. Um, there's a, there are links in there uh, to the old Caldersley Chaplaincy Team website where you can still uh, hopefully order those. Um, and that gives you the booklet along with a CD with the music and the PowerPoint um, if that's something you were looking to use. Um, but if you're if you're struggling to get a hold of that, please do get in touch with myself. Um, as I said, I work with two of the creators and I'm, I'm very good friends with the other members of the team so we can get that resource to you if that's something you're interested in. These are resources for primary five that's the bubblegum and fluff uh, or six depending on what you're doing with them and then Easter code for primary six or seven where they take the where you're able to break down the story in a, a very accessible multi-sensory interactive form there's also um depending on the relationship that you have with your school one of the programs that myself and Karen are doing in um in our going primary is uh, an it's a, an arts therapy course uh, with a biblical foundation, which is called Junior Pieced Together, P E A C E D Together. Now this comes out of a church down in Derbyshire called Lifeline Church, Lifeline Community Church, and um, Karen and I to date, or at the time of speaking, are actually two of the only practitioners in the country. Uh, or, uh, or sorry, in Scotland, um, of a of, uh, junior piece together where we we underwent a, a six week Zoom training, um, and it, there is a license fee involved with it. It costs a hundred and odd, a hundred pounds a year, roughly, to use that in your school, um, and we've been we've had the privilege of working with a number of pupils um, who have needed maybe a little bit of additional support, emotional support uh, for various reasons. Um, we've had a real honour of being entrusted with um, a small group of pupils at a time, uh, six to eight pupils at a time, um, for two hours a week for eight weeks. So they have gifted us a lot of of one to one time uh, with these pupils, uh, where we have journeyed through. Um, a program of reminding them that um, there is treasure in the storm, that there is beauty and brokenness, uh, and these um, and these are very wide names, but um, we hone into them in, in special ways, working with art and craft, um, and an opportunity to um, have that that uh, very that really um, very special time of just talking with one another and um, sharing in the situations that we face. And um, that has been a really, um, a really transformative time, not just for the pupils, but for us as chaplains as well. Um, and it's been wonderful to see those pupils really blossom and grow um, into um, into confident pupils. Who it's when you see them, it's one of those wonderful moments where. Um, when you're sitting in an assembly a few weeks after the programme that you've done and you're seeing them getting awards for confidence and for participation in class where that's been something that they've not maybe been um, that confident in doing before and it's that moment of going good on you, you know, they've, they've, some, something's clicked maybe or there's been that opportunity to see them really blossom and grow into themselves and that's been a real privilege to be a part of uh, and you know, the parents of our, our carers have been contact afterwards to thank us for uh, the work we've done with them. So that's something I really commend to you as well, Piece Together. There is an adult course but there's also a junior course uh, and I would wholeheartedly recommend that um, for anyone who's working in a primary school context, particularly with their are perhaps knowing um, situations that are needing a little bit more emotional support and attention. Shuna, um, wh wh where would you like to go from here? We're we wanting to sort of take back some feedback and some questions. Yeah, I think so. Feedback questions. If anybody's got anything they want to share, any questions that either you or I or anybody else that's here um, can try and answer or advise on. But yeah, just some open time before we can wrap up. That'd be fine. Maybe I could start Peter in our group, and I'm sorry he's gone. He was wanting to understand that the Christian secular environment in Scotland and how do we navigate that? Because it's very different from in England when you might be working in a church school. Um, so how do we really navigate that? You've talked about not proselytizing. You've talked about going in as a representative from the church or as the minister. You've talked about doing an assembly, maybe, and using Bible stories, but I don't know if you'd like to share any more about just navigating the what the boundaries are 
and where God is in all of this and where faith grows through all of this. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really tricky bit. I mean, schools have got to provide religious and moral education. They are meant to provide um, opportunities for time for reflection, which generally takes the form of an assembly. Um, so these are things that they must do. I guess I think the challenge is certainly, you know, back in my parent, little last Paris, two small-ish rural primary schools, if anybody had a faith that was going to be Christian, you know, whereas when I am now in cults, I mean, I walk into cults primary and I'm faced with, I don't know, half a dozen at least different faith pe people, of, you know, children of with different faith backgrounds there. So it's really difficult to kind of, you know, work out how far to push things. And I think that's really where knowing your school, knowing your staff, knowing the, the teachers is really important um, as to how far you can just gently push that. Um, and, you know, for example, Christmas and Easter are really good times mm -hmm. to be able, because, you know, all schools are going to be doing Christmas stuff. A lot of them will do something thing around Easter. So if you can be in a school during Lent or in the run-up to Easter, then you've got an opportunity there to do some, give some foundational information about the Christian faith and maybe use those th those opportunities. Or, for example, if you're doing some of the um, the right suspected school stuff to say, you know, for me as a Christian, my un you know, this fits absolutely with my faith and what Jesus taught us. So you can just, you know, it's about kind of bringing in your understanding to whatever it is you're covering off in the assembly, why, as a person of faith, that would be of interest to you or why you would want to talk about that. Um, and just sort of gently pushing that. In. And mm -hmm. back to these phrases, like, I believe, or as Christians, we would believe we would believe this, or mm -hmm. you know, even opening up the idea that that um, these are things that are important to, to people of the Christian faith. Thanks, you know, one of the things that we've been exploring in the education and schools group is that, um, and Stephen will be able to say a bit more, but schools are very unconfident about delivering RME and often want to have somebody from a position of faith to come and help <laughs> teach the Christian part about in RME. But a lot of schools are also really struggling in how they deliver religious observance and really really are seek actively seeking people who can come in and contribute to that so that's a great opportunity for us to go in to to you know to meet some of those needs so thank you no absolutely i mean one of the things that i do in the secondary school here um we get an opportunity that the, the I hate to call us a, a team, the, the chaplaincy team, because we're not really chaplains in that we get wheeled in to do things. But I wouldn't say we've got that kind of what I call a chaplain relationship. But one of the things they ask us to do in the run up to Christmas is to go into the first year um, personal development classes and, and actually tell the Christmas story and to actually explain from a Christian perspective what Christmas is all about. And, and it's great fun because the first years are still quite cute. At that point, I haven't quite kind of got grumpy and girly yet, girly yet. Um, and um, and I've just found this absolutely fabulous resource called this because the Nativity Escape Room, and it's just a series of little activity kind of code breaking things that they've got to do. And what it does is it debunks a lot of the myths along the way about the Christmas story from a Christian perspective, and actually opens up lots of good conversations with the kids. And that's a really valuable valuable time. Yeah. I think Fads has done a done an escape room with that. That was probably more in the church in a church setting. But yeah, I mean, that's an interesting. You could do it into an assembly in some ways as well. Great. Anybody got another burning question? I've just looked at the time, but if anybody's got any other comment or question, particularly for how how we can support and encourage ministers. But I think it's really also not just ministers, it's the church. How can we get the church to surround the minister and other people from the church to be involved in a whole range of different ways so that it doesn't necessarily fall onto one person, which I think is a great thing with it, with this. How can the church serve the local schools? I think that's important. I mean, one of the, I know I'm not the first to have done this and many of you may already have done this, but uh, we got our outreach group in the run-up 
the lot at the in service days before Christmas in November in service days, um, got some of our outreach ladies to do some baking, and mm -hmm. um, I contacted the school and said, look, we've got these ladies that would love to bake some cakes for you for your in service days. Would that be okay? And if so, how much? How many people will be in school? Because quite often staff go to different schools for their in service days, and and it up went down a storm. Absolutely well loved. Fantastic. Uh, one of the things I discovered while I was having a break while you were all chatting is that my, my deputy head on Cults Primary got exactly the same scores on Wordle and Connections today. <laughs> Yay! Well, yeah. the other way we're wanting to equip and support schools ministry is we're setting up a database so that we can send uh, newsletters and information out to people within a Church of Scotland context, principally um, who are acting as chaplains. So I'll send you the link for that if you haven't already received um, a mailing on that. We are trying to have these webinars and we've also got a training an introduction to schools ministry training that's taking place i think it's, it's the 8th of uh, 8th of november um so we're particularly wanting ministers to come for that ministers who are have been chaplains for a while but maybe never st stood back and reflected on it and people in training for ministry so look out for those opportunities and i'll send a follow-up email with um, all of some of those links and all of those resources. I'd like to just close with a short prayer and it's got a response to it. And I'd like to invite you to um, unmute yourselves and we can all say it, even if it sounds a bit of a cacophony, it's not very long. So it's really a kind of commitment prayer that we've been using as we've been thinking about schools ministry. Do you promise by the grace of God to give yourselves to this calling of schools, calling and ministry in schools with diligence, energy and love and to be guided by the spirit and the word of God. With the, with the help, help of God, God I will. Will. will you support and uphold in prayer the head, teachers and pupils in the school? With, with the, the help, help of God, God I will. I will. Will you share God's love and care with all those you meet? With, with the help, the help of God, of God, God. Will. will you seek ways to contribute to the curricula and extracurricular life of the school? With, with the, the help, help of God, of God I, will. I will. Servants of Christ, accept this service with which we have been entrusted. Mm -hmm. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Present yourselves to God as approved workers, ever faithful to the Spirit of God. May we, by word and example, support and encourage and share something of your love. In the name of Christ. Amen. 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 So thank you so much for coming. Our next webinar is... Um, on the 21st of uh, this month, and that's looking at rethinking our children's ministry in a time of change. People have talked about unions, huge change going on. So how might we rethink our children's ministry? But the following two webinars might be of interest as well. Um, there's one on April the 17th, which is looking at school community church partnerships so what happens outside the church and outside the school, but that's connecting the church and the school into something outside both. And we've got some really exciting examples of things that people are doing where churches are engaging with the school, but maybe offering something outside school curriculum and outside school time. But it's another great way of, of mission and ministry, really. And then on May the 1st, we've got Lucy Moore, who was the, the founder of Messy Church, but she now works with the Church of England. And they've got a very strategic direction, which is looking at how do we connect faith in church, home and school and those interconnecting areas. So she's going to be coming to talk about that sort of well-researched 
model and how that's working out across the Church of England as a way of very um, strategically, if you like, connecting those environments, but growing faith in all those places. So I think that would be another very, very good evening. So thank you so much, Jonathan and Shuna, for, for sharing the good and the bad and the ugly. And from all of your experience, thank you for everybody else for coming. We've all had things to share and to contribute from our uh, involvements in schools. And may we kind of live up to the commitments we've just made that by the help of God, we can and we will and we are. And how exciting and what a privilege that is to serve God in this way.